Selena Gomez, My Mind and Me, has hit Apple TV today. And this is directed by Alex Kashishian, if I've got his name correctly, who's mainly known for doing a lot of music videos. And he's done a couple of features before and worked a lot with Madonna. However, is this documentary any good? And does it really kind of portray Selena Gomez's life to what we kind of want to see? We'll stick around and let's find out. Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome to the channel and thank you so much for checking out this video and thanks for taking your time to check out this review. Yes, yeah, so I got a chance to check out Selena Gomez's My Mind and Me today on Apple TV and I was excited for this one because maybe many of you don't know this about me, but I'm a huge Selena Gomez fan. She's always been a celebrity crush of mine still is <laughs> um but yeah i've always been a big fan ever since the disney channel days and just kind of seen her and her career and life evolve from that point of time up until present day it's kind of been something magical to see in an extent of course but yeah i was very excited for this documentary i loved all of her studio albums some more than others for sure and i've always seen her in movies such as like the princess protection program back in the day stuff like spring breakers bad neighbors too and voice roles like hotel transylvania and you know stuff like that i know background context about selena gomez about a lupus and bipolar and a lot of stuff like that she's suffered through but is there anything new here where i can kind of flesh that out and be like oh wow i didn't know that about this person so what i will say is this documentary for most part i felt to be really really good and really very fascinating and then there's times where i felt like it could have been a little bit better and i would have liked to have seen more so let me get a little bit more into that because back in around 2016 time where this documentary sort of nearly opens up selena gomez was on kind of like big career high she was getting ready for this big revival to her and i actually had tickets booked to see her in manchester england um but unfortunately that didn't come to fruition she did cancel the tour and obviously at the time i think it was all to see about oh something like with diagnosis with lupus i didn't really know what that was so i researched it up and i was like oh right okay well it's a bit of a shame because i would have loved to have seen her live but you know fair enough hopefully she comes back again one day i don't think she has until present time but you never know maybe in the future should we get to that point? Now, there is a lot of kind of scenes here, which kind of feel like cut scenes in a way, where it's very black, white, grey scale focus scenes, where it feels like she's almost reading a little bit of like maybe like diary journals through this uh, monologue speeches as such. And I thought those ones were really powerful when they kind of cut in and out. There's about maybe five or six of them, if I counted rightly, but uh, yeah, I might have got that wrong. So I uh, don't hold me to that. So I really like those kind of scenes and I felt that kind of added emphasis into this documentary. Where I kind of found where this kind of excelled really for me was giving us the behind the scenes look. And this had been filmed, wow, like from like 2016 onwards from what it seemed that maybe one day they were maybe thinking, oh, we could maybe make this into a documentary or like behind the scenes look on like a music video or, you know, whatever the case should be there. They definitely had this footage and... You could use it one day for kind of like archival i guess I, I don't know what they ever planned for it at that time but it was nice to see the journey from say 2016 all the way up until kind of present day to a regard where we see her journey so through the times where she's having highs times where she's feeling really low times where she feels like okay well maybe i need to go to the doctor and actually get this kind of checked out how i've been feeling and this is how she comes across and be diagnosed with the bipolar disorder but also having a kidney transplant which i personally did not know that um but so that was really fascinating to learn about that i also really like kind of the look that we get behind the scenes of interviews and also like her stage performances or like uh meet and greet sets and stuff like that because i feel like with this documentary it's very open honest and raw to it because there's a lot of times where selena gomez even said herself like in meet and greets it maybe would take say half an hour but she even openly said she milked it sometimes where it'd be like an hour hour and a half and i just felt like wow okay well that's an interesting perception because i've never really heard anyone kind of say that before but it just goes to show that maybe she wanted to milk it in terms of maybe meeting more people or she didn't want to go on to do a show so she thought okay well i'll just spend more time maybe with fans 
however she felt at that present time. I just thought that was a really interesting perception to see someone say that and also kind of say that on camera <laughs> too. And yeah, I just really like the looks of behind the scenes and the interviews because there's several times here when she's doing an interview and she clearly goes on record and says after the interview's ended, she's like, like are we done kind of thing? And then like she goes backstage, she's like, well, that was one of the worst interviews I've ever done. I feel dumb. I feel cheap. I feel like I'm kind of like a product or like she gets like triggers or something. So maybe how she felt back in the Disney days. And one thing I've noticed with a lot of these child actors who are now grown up, although, yeah, you know, at the time they were young, they may be getting paid, you know, a decent wage for sure. That in the long term kind of things, when they've grown up, they seem to have some kind of triggers about those experiences back then being a child actor. And I think... It's really crazy how maybe they were treated back then and how that was kind of acceptable and how they got away with that because a lot of these celebrities now are facing maybe problems as they've gotten older and maybe not due to like the support systems that they had, you know. So I think all around that is very kind of bizarre and interesting to hear. And I found in this radio interview and like the sit down interview that she did, it's like she felt like she was cheap. She felt like she felt like she said she felt like she was back on Disney as such, which is, I guess was a bit of a trigger. One of the kind of management or someone in a team kind of said that to her. So I felt that was, I was like, wow, like, okay, geez, I did not expect that. But some of these interviews she was saying, they would ask her a question. She would give like an in-depth answer, but they wouldn't acknowledge it. It, it. It's just a bit ignorance in a way. So I really don't blame her of how she felt at certain points through these interviews. And she felt, wow, not doing these again because... I kind of don't blame her for that. So I found those elements in this documentary to be really fascinating. And those are kind of the moments I was glued to. I was like, wow, I kind of want to see more of these and how she feels like after like an interview that goes really well or an interview that is a stinker, like the one that she shows in the uh, documentary there. I wanted to see more of that because also this documentary is set out in terms of different kind of time scales where it kind, of, it kind of leads into a bit more of the negatives here and what I would have liked to have seen different because like any documentary you get it where it might be set in present day then be like oh let's take you back to this time let's take you to this time so it jumps to times like all the time but I felt like with this one what would have really kind of helped it for me was if they set it you know right shown right at the beginning 2019 like how this all kind of maybe first started or when Selena maybe realized look I maybe need to take a little bit of time to myself Maybe going back to her child days, because, of course, when she was seven years old, she was cast for Barney, which was obviously like a big break, kind of like in her career as such. I would have liked to have kind of shown from that progress and her talking a little bit, right, okay, so this is how I felt in Barney. Okay, so going up and getting the opportunity and Wizards of Waverly Place. Okay, so this is how I got casted into this uh, kind of thing. Now, that Wizards of Waverly Place is very literally touched on. And obviously that was a big part of her acting career, but I understand because of the whole Disney thing, maybe how she feels about Disney present time. I don't know, obviously 100%. This may be why they skimmed over it a little bit there. But I would have liked to have seen more structure like that and then eventually got to like, say 2016, 2019. Because this uh, does focus a lot on her time when she was with Justin Bieber, for example, and then hounded by the press being like, oh, it's Justin going back into rehab uh, and stuff like that. And there's one point where she's like, Look, not to be rude, but I just want to go get food. Is that okay? And she, she walks off to go get food. But yeah, it's a bit of a tough one because I felt like if it was structured a little bit more differently, and there's a lot of times here where we get like a low point in Selena's career or her life, and then she's a little bit better, then it goes back to low, better. And it just kind of felt like there was so much of it in a way. I would have liked this documentary to be set out again as it started when she was younger, grown up until present day. And I felt like that would have been a bit more fluidity to the documentary and I felt like it would have like paced it a little bit better as well I'd be like right okay so there's a long patch here to an extent where she's like right okay this is the like career like laws that she's having or personal life laws okay so how is she going to battle out of those because when it was the point where she did feel low then it showed a moment where she felt like quite high I was like wow awesome like I had a smile on my face then she's back down to low again I was like oh like, I'm like, I've just gotten up to this point in emotions here where I'm like really invested. Then you've got me back down to feeling like this again. I'm just like, ah. I mean, don't get me wrong. At the end of the day, I did like enjoy this a lot. And I did walk away thinking like, like wow. Okay, like I'm glad I know a bit more extra information now. I don't mean there's a lot of stuff in here that's like really groundbreaking in terms of if you're like a diehard fan, you're going to be like, oh, wow, I didn't know like 15 different things in this documentary. Nothing like that. There's definitely a couple of things here. 
and one with like a neighbor she had back in the day called Joyce who used to have like this dollhouse that she used to obsess over I was like wow well that's cool she actually got to see the neighbor as well um that was quite funny actually because when she actually got to see the neighbor and I think maybe being a husband I you can tell he was maybe like nervous or like trying to act like surprised as such as she was there <laughs> I, I just kind of like found myself giggling at that point in terms of my thoughts for this documentary I thought it was interesting definitely a fascinating watch and definitely done pretty well definitely could have had some improvements here but i think for the most part if you're a fan of selena gomez you're going to find something interesting in the documentary you probably enjoy this one if you are brand new and you're just like oh well who's selena gomez let me learn about a story i feel like there's a lot here that you will learn but i think maybe fans of hers would appreciate this more and again this might all come down to the structure and how would i would have preferred to have seen it so with that in mind my overall score for selena gomez my mind and me is a four out of five stars so have you seen this documentary are you gonna go check it out leave any and all comments down below uh please give this video a big thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel by pressing the red button down below so i can see you again on another video and do you know that i also have a patreon yeah for only two pounds per month with the link down below in the description box you get access to so many extra features including early videos some big announcements that i've made now which are going to be patreon exclusives and a lot more stuff going on behind the scenes that you'll also find out first and also i just want to give a big special thank you to all my awesome patreons who help support the channel and yeah they're all awesome so yeah thank you so much for checking out this video and until the next time that i see you i'll be seeing you later